First oral question, Baroness Ritchie of Downpatrick. My Lords, I beg leave to ask the question standing in my name on the order paper. Uh, my Lords, the Government has engaged in negotiations with the European Union in good faith since last summer. We are asking the Commission to go back to Member States for a new mandate, but we cannot wait to fix the, problem, the issues facing people in Northern Ireland resulting from the protocol. We hope the EU's position changes. If it does not, then it will be necessary to act. <laughs> my Lords, political stability and peace can only be protected through partnership and pragmatism in Northern Ireland. There has been mounting speculation about the Government's proposed intentions to override parts of the Northern Ireland Protocol against the express wishes of the majority of MLAs who were recently elected to the Assembly. So, therefore, in this regard, could the Minister indicate is this correct, and if so, what format that will take, or, and will the Foreign Secretary and her team continue with negotiations with the EU on the outstanding technical issues on SPS and Customs Code, to which there are solutions. I believe that is what is required to underpin political stability in Northern Ireland. Uh, my Lords, I am grateful to the noble Baroness who uh, asked me quite a number of questions there. Um, uh, in response, um, she will know that, uh, like her, uh, I am a very strong supporter of the Belfast Good Friday Agreement, as is the Government. The problem we face today is that an instrument, the protocol that was designed to uphold the agreement, is now ironically undermining the agreement and threatening political stability uh, in Northern Ireland. Witness, we have had no First and Deputy First Minister since February and no immediate prospect of having them unless something changes. Um, uh, it, it is therefore the Government's position that we will uh, at some point have to make a realistic assessment of what intervention is necessary. As to the precise nature of that intervention, uh, uh, the Noble Baroness will be aware I can't go into any more detail uh, today, but I don't think she will have to wait very long. My Lords, is it not the Government's overriding duty to protect and safeguard the Union? at a time when Sinn Féin may be the largest party in the Assembly but has absolutely no mandate for constitutional change. Will my noble friend ensure that uh, the Government continues to stand four square for our union? Yeah. Uh, I'm very grateful to my noble friend with whom I go back uh, many years, including to my first uh, job interview, uh, uh, when, 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 when I believe we discussed these uh, matters uh, even, even then. Uh, my noble friend makes a very important point about the result of the elections, uh, and it also touched on what the noble Baroness said, which is that, uh, yes, while Sinn Féin are the largest single party in, in the Assembly, uh, we should all remember that the largest designation in the Assembly remains unionist, uh, uh, follow, follow, followed by nationalists. There is therefore, as my noble friend makes very clear, no mandate for constitutional change as a result of the elections that took place on the 5th of May. Uh, regarding the point about standing rock firm for the Union, I think a phrase um, associated with the late Sir John Biggs Davison many years ago, um, he has my uh, absolute guarantee that this Government remains committed to the Union, uh, something that the Prime Minister made very clear in his article in the Belfast Telegraph uh, this morning. My Lords, my Lords. Of course, it is right that the Prime Minister is in Belfast today, but the Minister, who has enormous experience in Northern Ireland politics, knows that one-off meetings just will not solve the problem. And so it requires proper, intense, round-table negotiations with the European Union, the Irish Government and, above all, with all the political parties in Northern Ireland. So does he agree that the issue will not be solved? by grandstanding, newspaper articles and megaphone diplomacy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, my Lords, I am grateful to the, uh, the Noble Lord, who was a very distinguished uh, Northern Ireland Secretary uh, him, yeah, yeah, yeah. himself and has great experience in these, uh, uh, in these matters. Um, uh, he will be aware that um, uh, my right honourable friend, the Secretary of State for Northern Ireland, has been in fairly constant um, uh, uh, dialogue with the representatives of the five main uh, Northern Ireland parties in recent days, uh, in addition to the Prime Minister's very welcome visit to, today, where the objective is to try and you know, clear some of the hurdles which are preventing <coughs> the formation of an executive. He is absolutely right that uh, we will maintain uh, that dialogue uh, and keep talking. Uh, um, uh, to try and achieve that, that objective, uh, but we also need to be realistic that one of the key impediments, the key impediment to the immediate restoration of the institutions are the problems that have been created by the protocol and they need fixing. 
My lords, my lords. Yes, sir. My lords, does the minister acknowledge that unilateral action would not carry the support of the majority in the Northern Ireland Assembly, as Baroness Ritchie has said, and could potentially do huge economic and, polit and, di and diplomatic damage at this time? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. I'm grateful to the noble Baroness. Um, I have been reflecting in recent days that. Uh, uh, of the number of uh, people who for decades told us that um, we could never proceed in Northern Ireland on the basis of majority rule and majoritarianism and now be the greatest champions of, um, of proceeding on uh, that basis. It is clearly unsustainable uh, to have a protocol uh, in operation in Northern Ireland in its current form that does not command the support of the largest designation in the Northern Ireland Assembly. Uh, clearly, um, that position is unsustainable, and that is what we're trying to fix. Would my noble lord, uh, the minister, would, would the noble lord, the minister, my, my noble friend, confirm that the assembly does operate entirely on the consent of a majority of unionists, still the biggest designation, and a majority of nationalists? And then, indeed, the basis for any changes to the institutional framework of the 1998 agreement, as amended, and indeed the St Andrews Agreement is based and it requires the consent of a majority of unionism and a majority of nationalism. That has been the approach consistently since the 1990s. Um, as my noble friend uh, rightly points out, the sufficient consensus rule has guided um, most political negotiations since, I think, the publication of the Ground Rules for Political Talks, published by the British and Irish governments in June uh, 1996. Uh, clearly, the protocol in its current form does not command uh, sufficient consensus. Uh, that is why the government will be working extremely hard to build uh, widespread community, community consensus uh, that includes both unionists and nationalists uh, as, we, uh, as we take things forward. My Lord. Our, our, friends, our friends in Europe, if we have any left, are puzzled as to why an agreement which the Prime Minister lauded to the heavens is now not acceptable. My Lords, surely we cannot proceed by threats. We've got to proceed by talking and talking and talking to make some modifications if necessary. If the noble Lord will forgive me, I won't get drawn into the, the, the history of this, but it is very clear uh, that the, uh, uh, well, I'm, I'm actually focused not on the past, but actually on the present and the future, yeah, yeah, and in, yeah, yeah. In, in, in not how we got here, but how we actually get out of here. Um, and I, I agree that there is um, you know, clearly uh, space for negotiations. We want to keep talking to the European Union, but we have been discussing uh, these matters with them uh, uh, for some time, since last summer. And at the moment, the clear and present threat to the Belfast Agreement and political stability in Northern Ireland, an agreement that he and I support and have supported since the 10th of April 1998 and continue to support, the, that is the, the clear threat to that is the, uh, is the continuing operation of the protocol in its current form. And therefore, uh, the government will, as I've said, and the Prime Minister has made clear in Belfast today, do everything uh, that, that is necessary to try and fix those problems uh, for the good of Northern Ireland. My Lord, my Lord, my Lord, my Lord, my Lord, my Lord, should we not remember very carefully that there has never been a time since the war when it was more important to try and march in step with our friends and allies in the European Union? And would he? reflect on the fact that the late great Harold Macmillan had a wonderful quote on his desk from W.S. Gilbert, quiet, calm deliberation untangles every knot. Um, in, wh in which spirit I'm sure my noble friend will welcome the tone and content of the Prime Minister's article in the Belfast uh, uh, Telegraph this morning. Uh, what we are, we, of course we are, uh, as I've said, uh, continuing to talk to the EU, continuing to work with the EU, uh, but um, uh, whatever else is going on, we cannot allow the problems in Northern Ireland to uh, continue to fester uh, and the institutions um, uh, uh, continue to be in abeyance. Um, you know, he and I both support the Belfast Agreement. Without the institutions, without the Assembly, Strand 2 doesn't work. Without uh, the Assembly, Strand 3 doesn't work. And without the institutions, the Belfast Agreement looks pretty thin. Uh, we need to get into a situation quickly whereby the institutions can be restored and that requires dealing with the protocol. My Lords, the Human Rights Act fulfils the requirement in the 1998... Thank you. My Lords, the Noble Lord the Minister says he's not keen to discuss how we got where we are, but I believe a number of people in this House 
are very keen to understand how we got into this predicament. And the noble Lord Lord Frost, who negotiated the protocol, has made it clear that it was an imperfect protocol and it was agreed because it was the only way to get Brexit done. It was always clear that there had to be a border between the UK and Ireland, Northern Ireland if the protocol went ahead. So would the noble Lord the Minister agree that Parliament, this House and the people were misled and that's why we're in the mess we're in now? Um, I don't share the characterisation of the, of the noble Baroness uh, regarding uh, uh, a border. Um, we have made it very clear in our uh, discussions with the EU uh, that we will uh, carry out the necessary checks um, that are required for goods that are moving from Great Britain to Northern Ireland, whose onward destination is the uh, EU single market. Our issue is and always has been with goods going from Great Britain to Northern Ireland that will never leave the United Kingdom, which are currently subject to the same checks. What we need to achieve is a situation in which both the uh, EU single market and the UK internal market are fully respected.